How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. So before we get started, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Leave a like on this video if it helps you whatsoever. And comment down below if you have any issues. Me or someone else will help you. And even better yet, don't forget uh, to go ahead and join this official Spooks HD Discord, the best place to get help from the community and myself. We have a dedicated help section, so if you have any issues, you can go there and get your problem solved really quickly. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, if you haven't seen the title, which is a bit difficult since you clicked on the video, um, we're learning about global variables, print, and local variables, and when to specifically use them. So um, anyways, without no more talking, let's just go ahead and uh, get right into the video. So um, we're going to go ahead and create a uh, script and server script service by right clicking, going to insert object, pressing script. Now we will cover what the rest of these do later on, but we're going to start with a basic um, scripting tutorial here with the, uh, with the very basic goal. And um, so let's go ahead and talk about server script service before we start. Um, so scripts can run in a few places. They can run within, uh, well, they could practically run anywhere in workspace. So if there's, if they're anywhere in here, um, if they're in here, then they get ran. If they're in server script service, they run. Um, I, in chat, in the chat one, I believe they run. I don't think so though. Um, so these are primarily the two places you'll be putting them, but I always recommend that you put them in here no matter what. Uh, it depends on what you're doing in here, but otherwise you should place it in here. If it has something to do with the character, place it in workspace. If it doesn't, put it in service script service. Um, so anyways, we're going to go ahead and open this up. And you will always, uh, you will always get this when you create a new script. And this is actually a good example of what print does. Or at least not a good example of what it looks like and how you should use it. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And let's go ahead and talk about two ways to call print. If you want to call print like this with a space um, or like that, I guess. So you can, uh, there's actually a few ways to do it. So you can call print like this, like this, or uh, how most people do it like this. Um, and this is practically how most people do it, and this is how you should do it. Um, but you can do it the other ways. So uh, when you actually press, uh, if you, we're not going to go ahead and press uh, this button right here, uh, the play button, because this goes ahead and um, what this does overall is just spawns in a character and runs the server code and client code if there are any uh, additionally. So we're going to go ahead and press the server run and we're going to go ahead and press that and this only runs the server side. And as you could see, uh, don't worry about that one that's from a plugin. Uh, we see that a hello world pops up from the script. And if we go ahead and change this to like, hey, and then we press uh, the run the server run button, you could see that it changes. So what this does is print outputs to this output here. And you can actually enable that if it's not already there, you can enable it by going to view and then output. And that's how you practically get to this point uh, or how that's how you get that. Uh, enabled so you can view it. So you could see that you have uh, the word hey there displayed and I accidentally copied and pasted that. But yeah, you have it displayed there. So let's go ahead and go over how, when to use print. Print should be used when you're debugging. Like let's say an error occurs and it's like something is undefined and you want to print a variable, which we'll get to soon. Um, or like, let's say, um, Let's say you're trying to access a piece of paper behind a door, but, um, but that door doesn't exist. So when you're trying to access it, it's going to error because it doesn't exist. So you want to print before that to check if it does exist or not to just make sure you're in the right area. So that's what print does. So let's go ahead and work with global or actually local variables first or glo technically local and global. So, okay. So basically, if you search up what a global variable is, you might get this or this, uh, pretty much this though. Um, we're not going to be talking about those yet. That'll be for a future video. What I mean by global is a variable that's like this. Um, with, so basically a local variable is like local and then um, your uh, variable name. A 
global variable though is like uh, let's name a variable lol. It just gets rid of the local part. So let's go ahead and try to think of an analogy here. Imagine if we had two boxes. We have one large box and then we have a small box. And the small box is inside a large box. Well, let's say um, there's a piece of paper in the large box and a piece of paper in the small box. Okay, well, since a small, so the large, the, in the large box, that piece of paper is a local variable. But since the small box is inside the large box, the small box can access that piece of paper. But let's say the piece of paper inside the small box is also a local variable. Well, the, lar the um, large box can't access the small box's local variable because it's not inside it. Uh, so that's how you can view local variables. Now, global variables. Now, imagine you have a, a get rid of the local variable in the large box. Just imagine a small box with a global variable that's like this uh, without the local sign. It's not a local variable. It's just global. Well, Unlike the last situation where it was a local variable, the large box can actually access the small box's variable because it's a global variable. And that's how they work. That's how you can visualize it. So let's go ahead and create our first local variable first. Um, so local, uh, we'll just do uh, s is equal to, and this is how you set a value, a variable, by using equals. You don't have to put a space. You can put... Uh, can have it like that but you can't do this so if you're trying to save them max amount of characters well not going to work um so yeah you're you have or not max amount of characters but amount of white space so you, uh we're going to go ahead and just do this for formatting at the moment so s is equal to let's say um hey so now when we go over to print where this is called a string or this is called a string um instead of putting this here you'd put an S to, for the variable. And once you press the uh, server run button, uh, it goes ahead and prints out, hey, we can change this to whatever we like. Uh, maybe like subscribe to uh, Spooks HD. You know, you should think of doing that if you're not already. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it prints out in the output, which is a fairly simple uh, idea. So um, that's how you print out a string, which is uh, in quotation marks, uh, or, um, comma, uh, uh, not commas, um, apostrophes. Uh, so that's when you want to. Um, so you can do this or you can do this, uh, either one. Um, so anyways, so let's go ahead and print out a number. So let's try like 950, 950. So if we go ahead and run that, it also prints out 950, 950. Perfect. That's working the way we want it. Now let's try getting rid of this local. Does it still work? It, well, as you can see, it still does because it's 950, 950. Just because it's not a local variable doesn't mean it can't be used. It just means that it can be used anywhere uh, below that point. So that's that's pretty cool. So that's pretty much the entire tutorial. It's not what I usually do, a tad bit shorter than usual, but um, just for basically for this series. So anyways, if this video helped you out, if you're learning and starting to get the gist of Lua, then uh, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to join the official Spooks HD Discord if you have any issues. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.